Hey, Sadam Grover here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to some Logic Pro today. I wanted to show you a trick on, you know, loading up some sounds that you might want to use for an original drum kit. This might be basic information to you. Maybe you've already done some sampling in Logic Pro. So nothing new there for, for those people who are used to this, but you know, I, 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 I'm kind of new to the game. And so what I learned, I want to show you. So recently, actually, probably a few months back, like a whole, probably since May, I, I purchased this Vivker Voyage Vaporwave. So this is a, a library of retro sounds for some synthwave projects in the future, or a retro wave, depending on how it sounds. But it does sound pretty retro, whatever the, the specific genre is. And I finally found the time to load up these samples, or, or many of these samples, rather, uh, to to Logic Pro using the UltraBeat here. And UltraBeat is a wonderful tool for loading sounds for specific drum kits, you know, for original drum kits. And so you can see here that I have uh, a Synthwave kit and I've, I've titled it blue because I'd like to maybe develop four or five of these and maybe color code them. So maybe next time it's going to be red, you know, depending on what, what key I compose in, I guess, <laughs> for my song. Um, but I'm pretty happy with, with what I have. You could see if I just go up the two octaves here. So all these sounds um, ranging to complete octaves. And I have a couple kicks for my C's here. So one C here and one C here. And you can see also that I've, I've organized it as such where it's kick one, snare one, tom one, and then moving up the octave, kick two, snare two, tom two. I like to organize it that way. So I'm pretty happy with this kit. But before that, I didn't know how to do a completely new sampler template where everything had just kind of a set default. So going down on this menu here, I have developed one called sampler template. And you can see it's all these empty slots here and, and all set to the same default. Pay, pay no mind to this sequencer here. That's just the sequencer by default uh, that you could play and kind of test how the kits sound in the future. But uh, other than that, other than the sequencer down here, everything is, is, is the same as far as our parameters are concerned. So that's where you can, you know, on your C, this is our key C. Uh, it actually probably can't remember what C, what octave, maybe C2 or C3. Maybe that doesn't even matter, but it, this is the key of C or the key on the, <laughs> uh, the MIDI controller. That is C here, and it is waiting for us to load a sound sample. So if you just go to this red text here, uh, load sample like such. And actually I, I do have the uh, kicks folder open already because that was my most recent location, but I'll just go ahead and show you um, back to desktop here. You can see I have the Vaporwave samples here and this is drum shots. So just one instance of a sound. And then I've got these great folders, you know, kicks, snares, toms, and all the rest. So we'll go for kick and you can see I have quite a lot of kicks to choose from all the way down to 50. So we'll just choose 47. Let's see how this sounds. If my computer will let me, there it is. That's okay. It's not the best kick. It could use some cleanup, maybe add a little bit of reverb, some tail, but uh, let's just go ahead and select open there. And then you can see in the text, the kick number 47. And I will go ahead and write that as kick one. That's how I organize it. So that's the first C there. And it's it's kind of loud by default. So, you know, we could just bring it down, but I'm not gonna really worry about the volume right now. This is just a demo. Now I'm gonna go up one octave to my next C. And you can see that flickering here. That's because I'm depressing, rapidly depressing the C one octave up on my oxygen MIDI controller. So I'll just go ahead and label that two, kick two, and we'll go ahead and load the sample. Just make sure that this is highlighted in white so you know where you are. So wherever you are highlighted in white, that is your sound to work from. So let's go ahead and load another sample. We'll be in kick again. Let's try kick number eight. 
Ah, that's, oh, that's nice. S -s Some of it's nice. Like that first instance, it sounded good. Uh, so again, peaked, but I do like it. I do like it. And I just usually keep it at the default pitch. When it comes to other percussion sounds, maybe I mess with the pitch, but I like the original um, rate and original pitch for kick to be what it originally was, what I had purchased. So now we have two kicks. Whoa, okay. Not as clean when I'm playing it quite quickly and loudly. So again, this is just a demo, so we are cleaning that up. So that is my sampler template there. But you know, what if you don't have one? Now, I have, before I even go any further, I do want to give you a bit of disclosure. This logic is 10.4.1. This is a rather old version. I don't have the the recent versions, and this is a very old iMac with a fairly old operating system that cannot be updated. I've tried. So actually, your logic might, depending on your uh, workstation, it might actually look a little bit different, but hopefully the method is the same on how to uh, set up your sampler template. In any case, we are going to go ahead and select a random kit. And just to show you what the sequencer does sound like, I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit and play the sequencer. This is the IDM kit one. Uh, I like IDM. <laughs> uh, let's see how this sounds. So pretty interesting going up the octave. all the way up to, you know, all the way up 15 steps. Uh, but let's go ahead and I would like to save this as IDM 011 as a duplicate. And now we can just make sure we're there, looking good. Now this is really to act as a duplicate to work from. So I'm here. And now I just want to start fresh. So let's go ahead and start with this one highlighted in white down here and right click. Go down to init, I think that's how you pronounce it, or initialization, and all the way down to sample. And then you have the initial sample. And, you know, just kind of be mindful how it's defaulted, you know, Fortunately, these are all turned off, um, but I would go ahead, you know, I kind of like to just give it a, a smaller envelope just, just in case. Oh, okay, so so envelope four is pretty, pretty short there. So that is our initial sample. And then you can load up something. So what I like to do, and you know, just listen to music for 20 minutes, it probably doesn't take that long. We'll just go ahead and, and keep doing that. So right click sample, right click, sample. And before you know it, you know, up 15 or 16 steps, you do have your sampler template like that. And, you know, as far as the envelope, just make sure I would say, just be consistent. That's just me, that's just my organization talking, but that is how you do it. So hopefully that was helpful. If you've never worked with samples before, um, there were some people on YouTube who say, hey, you know, I have, a, I have a sampler template for you, but join my mailing list or be, become a member. And I thought, well, not, not, not a bad idea. It's not bad to join a mailing list. You can join my mailing list at soundengraver.com. Uh, but, but all that to say is, well, I feel like there's an easier way to, to doing this. And, and sure enough, there is, um, you know, logic is pretty flexible for you to be able to, uh, clear a patch or sound and load up some sounds. Thank you very much for listening and watching and always be on the lookout for some more sound experimentation every week. And until I see you next, keep producing the music you love and I will catch you later. Thanks again.